On March 25th of the year 3019 of the Third Age, the doom and fate of Middle-earth was at hand. It was the hour of the Shirefolk to change the world forever. Far off at the Black Gate, Aragorn led the host of the West to that place to do battle with the forces of Sauron of Mordor, hoping to distract Sauron and give the hobbits Frodo and Sam the precious time they needed to accomplish their quest. They were to destroy the One Ring and bring about the downfall of the Lord of the Rings and a new age into the world. Hereafter are brought to life the events of the destruction of the One Ring, as told in the chapter Mount Doom in The Return of the King. The light sprang up again, and there, on the brink of the chasm, at the very crack of doom, stood Frodo, black against the glare, tense, erect, but still as if he had been turned to stone. Master! cried Sam. Then Frodo stirred and spoke with a clear voice, indeed with a voice clearer and more powerful than Sam had ever heard him use, and it rose above the throb and turmoil of Mount Doom ringing in the roof and walls. I have come, he said, but I do not choose now to do what I came to do. I will not do this deed. The ring is mine. And suddenly, as he set it on his finger, he vanished from Sam's sight. Sam gasped, but he had no chance to cry out, for at that moment many things happened. Something struck Sam violently in the back. His legs were knocked from under him, and he was flung aside striking his head against the stony floor as a dark shape sprang over him. He lay still, and for a moment all went black. And far away, as Frodo put on the ring and claimed it for his own, even in Samoth Naur, the very heart of his realm, the power in Barad-dûr was shaken, and the tower trembled from its foundations to its proud and bitter crown. The Dark Lord was suddenly aware of him, and his eye piercing all shadows looked across the plain, to the door that he had made, and the magnitude of his own folly was revealed to him in a blinding flash, and all the devices of his enemies were at last laid bare. Then his wrath blazed in consuming flame, but his fear rose like a vast black smoke to choke him, for he knew his deadly peril, and the thread upon which his doom now hung. From all his policies and webs of fear and treachery, from all his stratagems and wars, his mind shook free, and throughout his realm a tremor ran, his slaves quailed, and his armies halted, and his captains, suddenly steerless, bereft of will, wavered and despaired. For they were forgotten. The whole mind and purpose of the power that wielded them was now bent with overwhelming force upon the mountain. At his summons, wheeling with a rending cry, in a last desperate race there flew, faster than the winds, the Nazgul, the Ringwraiths, and with a storm of wings they hurtled southwards to Mount Doom. Sam got up. He was dazed, and blood streaming from his head dripped in his eyes. He groped forward, and then he saw a strange and terrible thing. Gollum on the edge of the abyss was fighting like a mad thing with an unseen foe. To and fro he swayed, now so near the brink that almost he tumbled in, now dragging back, falling to the ground, rising and falling again. And all the while he hissed, but spoke no words. The fires below awoke in anger, the red light blazed, and all the cavern was filled with a great glare and heat. Suddenly Sam saw Gollum's long hands draw upwards to his mouth, his white fangs gleamed, and then snapped as they bit. Frodo gave a cry, and there he was, fallen upon his knees at the chasm's edge. But Gollum, dancing like a mad thing, held aloft the ring, a finger still thrust within its circle. It shone now as if verily it was wrought of living fire. Precious, 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 Gollum cried. My precious, all oh, my precious. And with that, even as his eyes were lifted up to gloat on his prize, he stepped too far, toppled, wavered for a moment on the brink, and then with a shriek he fell. Out of the depths came his last wail, precious, and he was gone. There was a roar and a great confusion of noise. Fires leaped up and licked the roof. The throbbing grew to a great tumult, and the mountain shook. Sam ran to Frodo and picked him up and carried him out to the door. 
And there, upon the dark threshold of the Samoth Nower, high above the plains of Mordor, such wonder and terror came on him that he stood still, forgetting all else, and gazed as one turned to stone. A brief vision he had of swirling cloud, and in the midst of it towers and battlements, tall as hills, founded upon a mighty mountain throne, above immeasurable pits, great courts and dungeons, eyeless prisons sheer as cliffs, and gaping gates of steel and adamant, and then all passed. Towers fell and mountains slid, walls crumbled and melted, crashing down, vast spires of smoke and spouting steams went billowing up, up until they toppled like an overwhelming wave, and its wild crest curled and came foaming down upon the land. And then at last, over the miles between, there came a rumble, rising to a deafening crash and roar. The earth shook, the plain heaved and cracked, and Orodruin reeled. Fire belched from its riven summit. The skies burst into thunder seared with lightning. Down like lashing whips fell a torrent of black rain, and into the heart of the storm, with a cry that pierced all other sounds, tearing the clouds asunder, the Nazgul came, shooting like flaming bolts, as caught in the fiery ruin of hill and sky they crackled, withered, and went out. Well, this is the end, Sam Gamgee, said a voice by his side. And there was Frodo, pale and worn, and yet himself again. And in his eyes there was peace now, neither strain of will, nor madness, nor any fear. His burden was taken away. There was the dear master of the sweet days in the Shire. Master, cried Sam, and fell upon his knees. In all that ruin of the world, for the moment, he felt only joy, great joy. The burden was gone. His master had been saved. He was himself again. He was free. And then Sam caught sight of the maimed and bleeding hand. Your poor hand, he said, and I have nothing to bind it with or comfort it. I would have spared him a whole hand of mine, rather. But he's gone now beyond recall, gone forever. Yes, said Frodo. But do you remember Gandalf's words? Even Gollum may have something yet to do. But for him, Sam, I could not have destroyed the ring. The quest would have been in vain, even at the bitter end. So let us forgive him. For the quest is achieved, and now all is over. I am glad you are here with me. Here at the end of all things, Sam. Hey guys, Joyston here, and I hope you all enjoyed today's special video. Happy Tolkien Reading Day, my friends, which in the Legendarium also marks the downfall of Sauron, the destruction of the One Ring, and the new start of the Gondorian New Year thereafter. Many of us Tolkien channels got together and, by the suggestion of my friend Nerd of the Rings, made some special videos for March 25th, Tolkien Reading Day. Please check out his channel and the others that joined in today's project, which I will link in the description below. And we have gathered to make a playlist of these special Tolkien Reading Day videos, and I will link that in the description and in a card above as well. A huge shout out to our Valar tier patrons over on Patreon, Adrian de la Tour, Chris Ortner, Peter Shepard, Kyle Wetzel, and Lane Grimes. Thank you guys so much. Everyone, I'll see you all again on Sunday with another video. Thank you all so much for joining me on this special adventure. Until the next one, my great friends.